Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we come to bless our meal, we ask that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will rest upon us, that you will cause us to tap into your manifold wisdom, that you will flood the eyes of our understanding this morning with light, that you will cause us to perceive and to see in the realm of the spirit like we have never seen before. We ask for a different degree of sight in your presence. We ask that you will cause us to hear like we have never heard before. We ask for a different degree of hearing in the name of Jesus Christ. Mighty God, as the high priest had to put blood on his ear, Father God, to hear, we ask, mighty God, that as your voice begins to thunder, mighty God, that you will cause us to hear with our inner ear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, that light will be shone in every dark area. Mighty God, that your word will come forth. Mighty God, as a two-edged sword, that you will move by your spirit and that you will prevail, Father God. We pray that you will incubate us in your presence, in your power and in your might. Even now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, as the word goes forth, mighty God, let assignments be released and revealed today in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to be positioned to fulfill your will in the earth in the name of Jesus. Let the word begin to open new dimensions of power, might, and majesty unto us as we give you praise and we give you thanks. In the exalted name of Jesus, hallelujah. In the exalted name of Jesus, we give the Lord praise. This morning, we give him honor and we glorify his name. Amen, amen. No more delays. And all of us understand the concept and the idea of a delay, you are in a line and you have to wait. You were promised something and it didn't come through at the time you expected it and you have to wait. Amen. Amen. Do not be distracted by the issues that we're having with the flickering. Amen. We are moving right along. I want us to understand today that God is the God of the suddenness. Amen. He can cause things to shift in your life overnight. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Daniel, Daniel 2.21, that it is God who changes times and seasons. He does this because, brothers and sisters, he is eternity itself. I want you to recognize today that time is simply a fraction of eternity. It is a capsule of eternity. Amen. And every now and then God splits the womb of time. Amen. He splits the womb of time and reveals glimpses of eternity inside of time. Understand that when God begins to reveal who you are, begins to release divine revelation, I want you to recognize this morning that eternity is what is uh, released, that eternity is what covers whatever God begins to reveal. When he begins to reveal who you have been called to from the foundations of the world, understand that that revelation is coming out of eternity. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, when there is a release of uh, 
eternity, when there is a release of the glory of God, there is an automatic expansion of time. There is an automatic expansion of time and God begins to expand time and space to accommodate his glory. Whenever you are in the glory of God, some of us, we go into the presence of God and we do not recognize that we have been there for hours. It feels like we were in there a moment. Why? Because the glory of God has been released and reveal. I want you to understand that when you get into glory, time begins to stop. Hallelujah. That the time begins to back up. That time is split. That time comes under the jurisdiction of the weight and the majesty of God. That time begins to become submitted to the glory of the living God. That God can begin to re reshape and reorder time because his glory is in are uh, in position and is active. When we look at the life of Joshua, the Bible says that Joshua, uh, based on his mantle and his calling, his anointing and his assignment, began to prophesy to the son. The Bible lets us know that Joshua declared to the son, he declared to the son, stand still. And the son, brothers and sisters, because the glory of God was upon Joshua, because his mantle was taken from out of glory, because his assignment was released out of glory because his, uh, his gifts came out of the glory. Then brothers and sisters, glory recognized our uh, glory and glory uh, began to be produced and time had to back up. And so brothers and sisters, when Joshua commanded time to stand still. I want you to understand that there was an additional time given to man that when Joshua caused the sun to stand still, then the moon began to stand still. Then ah, uh, ah, uh, the stars began to stand still and everything associated with time and space began to stand still. And so I want you to recognize that an additional day was added to the timings of men, that the times that we live in, that there was an additional day attached to it. And so brothers and sisters, there is additional time simply because Joshua began to prophesy inside of the glory. And so, brothers and sisters, the days, the weeks, and the months that we are experiencing now, there was an addition because a man of God understood that when he was in the glory, that he could order, he could order and shift time. He could order time. He could cause time and space to become subjected to him. We see this also in the life of Ezekiah. Ezekiah asked for an extension of life, an extension of time. The Bible lets us know that he got 15 years. He got a, a, an additional 15 years of life. I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that God had to shift the times that we live in in order to accommodate the 15 years of life that was added unto our Ezekiah. Hallelujah. And so time began to backtrack and time began to expand to other God to be able to accommodate the prayer of one man. One man was able to shift times and seasons, not even for necessarily the agenda of heaven, but for its personal uh, desire. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, when you get in the glory of God, God will even begin to honor your personal desires. And so brothers and sisters, both men cause eternity to overtake time. Hallelujah. 
And so, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that when you begin to seek after the glory of God, you are literally seeking after the power of eternity. God dwells in eternity. And when his glory falls, a measure of eternity also falls. And so, brothers and sisters, if you are going to escape the ravages of time and space, if you are going to escape the things that are subjected to time, you have got to get into the glory of God. Hallelujah. Because understand this, God created times and seasons and designed them to allow man to practice his dominion. So God, who is dominion himself, created the heavens and the earth and created times and seasons to show man how to become a reflection of him upon the face of the earth. He gave man time so that he could practice his dominion, so that when time would be swallowed up in eternity, he, he, didn't, he would not be short of understanding his dominion and the expanse of his dominion when he entered into the glory of God. When man sinned, brothers and sisters, he was disbarred from his practice, like a lawyer is disbarred ah, from practicing law. He was no longer legally allowed to practice his dominion. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God gave man dominion and the practice thereof was locked up in time and space. And because man sinned, he was disbarred. Man could no longer practice his dominion over the earth. And what man should have had dominion over began to war against humanity. The war started, brothers and sisters, because creation did not recognize man outside of the glory of God. When man sinned, the glory of God began to depart from man. And so, brothers and sisters, our creation did not recognize man. His glory was departed. The Bible lets us know that we see the glory of God in the face of Jesus. And so, brothers and sisters, when creation began to look at man, he no longer saw glory. He saw something that was unrecognizable. He saw something that was marred. And this is one of the reasons, brothers and sisters, that Jesus had to be marred when he went to the cross. The book of Isaiah lets us know that his appearance was the appearance of somebody that was marred, that sin disfigured the face of Jesus and men began to turn away their heads. He had to be marred. Why? Because he had to recover the glory that was supposed to be in the face of men. Jesus had to recover that glory and he took on sin and sin, brothers and sisters, this figured him so man would no longer live under the disfigurement of sin. And so, brothers and sisters, the Bible says we are esteemed him not. We esteemed him a man stricken and full of sorrow. And we hid our faces as it, as it were from him because he was marred. And so, because creation did not recognize Jesus, they did not recognize, uh, sorry, Ah, man, because of sin, the ah, creation began to turn against man because the glory had departed from the face of men. Ah, and so, brothers and sisters, man was operating now up under a curse. He began to sweat to eat. He began to age. Sickness and disease began to overtake his life. Everything that the enemy planted in time and space began to uh, affect man. Man became subjected to the ravages of time. And so, brothers and sisters, in order for God to fix this, in order for God to stop the war, in order for God to diminish the effects of the war, 
God had to uh, introduce uh, a Kairos moment. Uh, and this is where God splits time and allows uh, eternity to come in. Hallelujah. When God desires to do a thing upon the earth, he has got to pause time and allow his glory to come in and to split time. This is what happened. Oh, when God declared that the seed of the woman was going to bruise the seed of the serpent according to Genesis 3, chapter 15, this prophetic word, brothers and sisters, began to rip through time and began to rip through space and began to reshape and reorder creation. Hallelujah. It began to sound an alarm that there was going to be a shift because lying in creation is the desire, brothers and sisters, to obey and to submit to authority and dominion. And since man sinned and gave over his dominion to the enemy, our creation began to line up behind the enemy to accomplish the design of hell because they have an ear, they have a desire uh, to submit to some sort of authority. And so I want you to understand that God had to release his voice over time and space to overrule and to overturn the commandments of hell. And so it was not merely God prophesying that Jesus was about to come, but he was also declaring that there was going to be a shift in creation, that the ear of creation was going to be turned back to where it belonged, that the ear of creation was going to be turned back, that it was going to start taking back orders from the designated legal authority that God had placed upon the earth, the designated authority, which was man, the designated authority, which was man who was supposed to have dominion over the earth. And so brothers and sisters, creation recognize the voice of God because the Bible lets us know that God said, let there be light in the genesis of creation, in the bursting of creation, the voice of God was there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, the Bible lets us know that the voice of God began to walk in the garden of Eden. And so, brothers and sisters, our creation began to recognize the person that brought it. He recognized the voice of the one that brought it into existence. And everything in creation began to turn at the voice of the living God. Everything in creation began and to turn ah, its attention. All of creation stood at attention at the voice of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. The Bible says at the voice of God that heaven and earth is going to be. Hallelujah. And so brothers and sisters, the prophetic word in the book of Genesis of the seed of God began to rip through time and space and began to reshape and order it. Creation was shifted to accommodate the prophetic word that came out of the mouth of God. The word, brothers and sisters, began to travel down through our 42 generations until it landed in the womb of Mary. When God gives you a prophetic word, Ah, uh, understand that you are going to experience his glory. But that is not all that God wants to do. Hallelujah. He wants you to recognize that the glory of the Lord that is back in that prophetic word is designed to peel back the hands of time and space and to overthrow brothers and sisters the ordinances that have been set in time and space. The ordinances of death and hell and destruction have been set and are connected to time. Brothers and sisters, you are born at a time, but you will die at a time. 
man was never created to die. And so I want you to understand, ah, uh, destruction, ah, uh, and hardship was not created for man. Sin came in the picture and man became subjected. And so brothers and sisters, when God gives you an encounter in his presence, when the glory of the living God begins to be unveiled, God is pulling back the hand of time. In that moment, when his glory begins to fall, he can reshape time. Not only so, he can reshape your destiny and reshape your purpose. He can shift people, shift government policies, shift our uh, Ah, oh, everything in your environment to accommodate his will in your life. That's why you need glory. Some of us, we need to shift out of all mindset, shift out of all anointing, shift out of stale encounters, and come into the fresh relief of the glory of the living God upon the earth. Ah, brothers and sisters, it is time for a shift. No longer can we afford to get in the presence of God and think that all God is doing is causing us to have a sensation and think that all God is doing is causing us to speak an heavenly language. Ah, it's far greater than that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God wants to bring you into glory because the devil cannot come into glory. In the glory, God the glory because his power and his majesty resides in the glory. And so, brothers and sisters, God gives us these experiences primarily because Satan is the God of this world. And because Satan is the God of this world, once we are in the world, we will be at war against his agents and his agency. Hallelujah. We must contend with the spirit of delay. Hallelujah. In one way, the other, the enemy cannot stop you from fulfilling your assignment, but he will certainly attempt to delay you. He will certainly attempt brothers and sisters to ensure that you are you are delayed in accomplishing the thing that God has called you to accomplish. The Bible lets us know that the very day, the first day that Daniel set himself to fast and to pray and to gain understanding, the Bible tells us that the first day that he decided to do this, that God released his, uh, his answer. But the Bible lets us know that there was demonic detention, that the angel of the Lord was detained for 21 days, that God had already blessed him, that God had already released the uh, blessing and the outpouring, but there was demonic delay. His angel of blessing was detained by the prince of Persia. His angel of blessing was detained because the devil is the god of the power of the ear. And so, brothers and sisters, we have got to contend with spirits of delay. Understand, brothers and sisters, that when you pray until the glory of God comes, that the glory is to disrupt demonic patterns and demonic lines of communication, our lines of communication between familiar spirits. And so brothers and sisters, understand that when you see undue delay in your life, that you must recognize that the prince of the power of the ear is at work and you have got to call on God begin to seek him 
until the glory of God that has the ability to split time and space, that has the ability to overrule the ordinances of time and space comes into effect. Not only so, but the enemy will attempt to frustrate your purpose. Ah, he comes to frustrate your plans and your purpose. He comes to frustrate your purpose and your destiny. While you are sleeping, while you are at rest, the devil will begin to sow tears among your wheat. And the uh, tears are designed to weaken the administration of your gift and your calling. Because what happens, brothers and sisters, when tears spring up among the wheat uh, in the natural, they begin to suck the nutrients uh, from the soil. And the nutrients that were supposed to exclusively go, brothers and sisters, to the wheat begins to be split and the nutrients start to go to the tear. And so the devil becomes like a leash and begins to suck on your life, begins to suck on your virtue, begins to suck on the power of your anointing, begins to suck on the power of your mantle and the administration of your gift. And I want you to understand that the spirit of Jezebel is one of the chief spirits that the enemy sends to frustrate your purpose. Ah, Jezebel tries to mimic the anointing, but Jezebel, brothers and sisters, is attracted to the anointing. Jezebel is attracted to those that are heavily anointed and those that carry rank in the realm of the spirit. And what Jezebel will do, because she cannot reproduce the anointing, cannot stand in the face of power. Ah, brothers and sisters, she will latch onto your gift and latch onto your rank, latch onto your office and begin to suck you. Is not this that Jezebel in the natural did to Ahab her, her husband, who was the king of Israel? She was not in his rank, but she connected herself with him, made covenant with him in order to suck the very virtue out of his life, out of his assignment to manipulate and to pervert his calling, hallelujah, and ultimately destroy him. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, the devil will cause undue delays, disappointment, and failure just to wear you out, just to wear you out so that you do not fulfill your assignment. When we look at the life of Jeremiah, Jeremiah became frustrated in his purpose and in his calling. He became frustrated because men began to reject him. He was ill-treated. But the Bible says, oh, Jeremiah said to himself that he would no longer prophesy in the name of the Lord. Ah, oh, but when Jeremiah thought he could abandon his assignment, the Bible lets us know that his prophetic call and his prophetic anointing became like fire that was shut up in his bones. And when it, oh, Jeremiah Try to keep silent. The hand of God, the hand of fire was upon him, and he had to open his mouth and begin to prophesy. And so, brothers and sisters, no matter how the enemy tries to frustrate your gift and your calling, the fire of God that is on the inside of you will not go out. And so, brothers and sisters, not only does the enemy seek brothers and sisters to sin, spirits of delay against you and to frustrate your purpose, he will also try to detour your destiny. When we look at the life of Moses, when Moses killed the Egyptian, the Bible says that Moses began to run from his purpose and his calling and landed brothers and sisters 
uh, in Midian and began to do everything except what God had called him to, began to forget who he was, began to forget his assignment. Ah, had spiritual amnesia, did not know who he was until God cornered him, until God began to visit him and began to pull him into the place of destiny. And so brothers and sisters, Understand that if you are under the sound of my voice today and you are in a detour, that by the power of the spirit of the living God, that you are being called up today to come back into alignment with the will of God. That if you are in a place where the glory of God has departed from you and you are marred and creation and everything around you has begun to turn away from you because it does not recognize you and has begun to war against you, a war against your progress, a war against your peace because it does not recognize you. God wants to re re recalibrate he wants to bring you back to the place where the glory of God can come back on your face. And so, brothers and sisters, we have got to learn to redeem the times. Our scripture tells us that the time would come where God would declare that there would be time no more. And in original Greek, that there would be no more delays. That the thing that God has for you would be released immediately. That while you are calling on him, he was going to bring the thing to pass. That God was not going to wait anymore, but that the moment the words were released out of his mouth, that all forms of delay were going to be broken from over your life. Some of us have been waiting on God for years, waiting for decades, but today upon the authority of the word of the living God, I am making a decree over your life that there will be no more delays, that the glory of God is going to fall and there is going to be an expansion of time and the glory of the living God is going to perform it, that there was going to be an overnight blessing, an overnight turn of events, that God is going to shift things and he is going to shift them suddenly. And so there's got to be a redeeming of the time. Redeeming mean that you have got to buy back the time. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is our redeemer. And salvation is connected to our redemption. And so, brothers and sisters, I want you to recognize that a part of the redemptive work of the cross was to redeem the times that you live in. And what it means, brothers and sisters, is for God to cause his glory to rest upon your times so that you are able to, number one, accomplish the things are uh, in days that would take you years. Number two, the times that you wasted in sin, the times that you wasted outside of purpose, that God will begin to collect your days and collect your years and begin to allow you to walk in the thing that he has called you to. Number three, that there will be an acceleration that you will begin to walk in glory that will cause you to run 
ahead of the times that you live in, that there would be speed about you, that when you speak a word, that there is an immediate impact, an immediate event, that the things that you need are going to suddenly find you, Ah, that the blessing of the Lord will overtake you, that the things that you have been praying for would be released with no more delay and no more waiting. And so brothers and sisters, it's time for you to redeem the times. David said it, that God should help him so that he could redeem his times, so that he could understand uh, the time that he had upon the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So that he could redeem his time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, when you recognize that your purpose is time sensitive, you do not have time to waste, that you will recognize that you ought to be in a hurry to accomplish the assignment of God because the time, brothers and sisters, is limited. And so you've got to buy back the time. You have got to ask God for the grace to accomplish the things that you were supposed to accomplish 10 years ago. But because you were distracted, because you were wasting time, you did not accomplish. You have got to go to God and ask him for grace to accomplish because you are not only going to have to give account to God uh, for the sin, and account to God for your action, but you are going to, you are going to have to give an account to God for your assignment upon the earth. Uh, you are going to also have to give an account to God for your time. What did you do with your time? How did you spend the time? What did you accomplish within the time that God has set up for you? We have to redeem the times because the devil is the God of this world. Hallelujah. And because he is the God of this world, he will set up brothers and sisters monitoring spirit that are attached to time and space. The devil has need for monitoring spirit. Why? Because he is not brothers and sisters omniscient. Hallelujah. Nor does he know the future. So in order, brothers and sisters, for him to attempt to manipulate the future, he sets up monitoring spirits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. These spirits, brothers and sisters, attempt to manipulate the elements that God instituted to measure time and space. Hallelujah. The sun, the moon, and the stars. That's why we have psychics. That's why we have people that read the stars are ah, in an attempt, brothers and sisters, to tell the future. That's why we have the zodiac, because our monitoring spirits, brothers and sisters, have been released to attempt to monitor our movements and to monitor what God has caused us to accomplish in the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We see this played out in the very life of Jesus, that the Magi, the wise men, these were men that were not necessarily worshipers of God, but God can use anything and anybody to accomplish his will upon the earth. They were what they called stargazers. These were men that used the stars to be able to predict and to be able to recognize what was upon the earth. Now, brothers and sisters, if the devil uh, could use men uh, to read the star of Jesus, uh, how much more will he not allow agents to be assigned to read and to attempt uh, to manipulate our future? Uh, but today the devil is a liar and the devil 
heart is already defeated. Hallelujah. And this is one of the reasons why you need the glory of God. When the glory comes, God begins to speak in the power of his own glory. Ah, oh, we see this in the creation story. The Bible says that before God began to speak, brothers and sisters, that the spirit of the Lord, the glory of God began to move upon the faith of the deer, began to move upon the waters. Hallelujah. God began to speak of the power of his own glory, the power of his own majesty. And the Bible lets us know that he spoke a word and the word began to ripple through time and space, through generation after generation. God said, let there be light. And light began to be released from one decade into another decade. From one, our brothers and sisters, from one generation to the other. From one century to the next, light was enforced because God spoke it. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, when the voice of God comes down in the cloud of glory, that you are allowed to come into time because of your worship, because of your praise, because of your prayers, understand that the voice of God is exclusive to the ear of the wicked. The Bible lets us know that the voice of God is as the voice of many waters. The Bible lets us know that the voice of God was walking in the garden of Eden, walking through time and space. And so when God begins to trumpet, ah, the sound of his voice, understand when the Bible lets us know that the trumpet of the Lord shall sound in the last day, that it is the voice of God that is going to sound. Ah, oh, brothers and sisters, like a trumpet in the last days, Hallelujah. And his voice is like the voice of many waters. And so, brothers and sisters, when the glory of God falls and God begins to speak, every diviner becomes man. Every monitoring spirit automatically lose its eye, uh, its earring. The communication system of the kingdom of darkness automatically shuts down and is disrupted because the voice of the one who sits upon the circle of the earth, the voice of reality, the voice of creation itself, the voice of who gives voice and tone to every living thing, everything upon the face of the earth, everything in the realm of the spirit begins to echo and everything brothers and sisters has to become subjected to the voice of the living God, hallelujah, to the voice of God, Andabosha. The voice of the living God. Every devil has got to be subjected to the voice of God. When God calls the counsel ah, of heaven, when God calls it, ah, the, the, the voice to be echoed, and he announces the gathering of his counsel, and he announces ah, that his throne is activated, ah, understand that he rules by the power of his voice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so brothers and sisters, in order to get rid of the communication system and the understanding of lower level spirits, you have got to invite glory into your space. You have got to invite glory so that it can swallow up everything that is attached to time and space. Understand that when God comes in his glory, when he comes in his eternity, in his eternal power, understand that he is coming as light. Ah, the Bible lets us know that God is light and in him there is no darkness, that the appearing of the Lord is light itself. The appearance of his coming is light itself. 
The light of the appearing of God ah, is blinding light, brothers and sisters. No wonder Paul, who ah, was on his way riding on a horse, that the glory of God knocked him out and he was blind for days. Why? Because the glory of the appearance of the living God is blinding light. It's another thing I want to tell you. Oh, when the glory comes, when you allow eternity to invade time, oh, the blinding appearance oh, of the glory of God is going to blind every monitoring spirit, is going to blind everything that is monitoring you, is going to put out every evil eye, is going to cause blindness into the camp of the enemy and cause the enemy to begin to turn on himself. The Bible lets us know that when Elijah had the praises and the praises began to sound, ah, oh, the glory of God, and the praises went before the prophetic word that the power of God, the glory of the living God began to fall and blindness came upon the enemy. Oh, understand that praise and worship is not just for you to feel good, but it is supposed to create a passageway for the glory of God to come so that the glory of the living God, our oh, brothers and sisters, oh, delivers you, but smites your enemy, brings you into breakthrough, but sabotages the plans and purposes of the wicked. Hallelujah. I want you to understand according to the book of Deuteronomy that this sword of God ah, is in his glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Ah, if you need God to begin to war on your behalf, if you need God to begin to execute vengeance upon the wicked that have springed up over your life, you have got to get into glory. Ah, oh, brothers and sisters, it is one thing for you to draw the sword of the spirit when you are contending in time and space. Ah, oh, it's a whole other story for God himself to draw his sword against the enemy of your life. Ah, oh, glory to God. Ah, this kind of sword, brothers and sisters, is designed to wipe out terror, uh, wipe out totally, ah, uh, destroy utterly in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want you to recognize today that the glory of God, ah, uh, ah, uh, elevates the Lord of hosts, the God of war. Ah, uh, understand that the Lord of hosts, uh, because he dwells in glory, is only activated by glory. That measure of warfare, that measure of God's dominion cannot be expressed until you get into the place of the majesty of his glory, its power, and his might. And so, brothers and sisters, God wants you to live in a place of absolute dominion. God wants you to live in a place where time and space become subjected. God wants you to live in a place that your prayers are immediately answered according to the perfect will of God. God wants you to live in a place where there are no undue delays, where there is no undue assault of the wicked one concerning your purpose and concerning your destiny that no monitoring spirit can determine your outcome. Ah, brothers and sisters, it's time to sound the alarm in Zion. It's time to awaken unto the high calling of God. Ah, the high calling of God. A part of that high calling, brothers and sisters, is for you to be raised up into a place of glory. To handle glory, to live in glory, 
and to progress in the glory of the living God. It's time to move. It's time to ascend into the realms of things. It's time to go up into the place where majesty, power, and dominion are resides. The Bible lets us know in the book of Revelation, as John was getting revelations unfolded to him, the Bible lets us know that the angel of the Lord, after ah uh, ah uh, after John began to get a uh, wonderful revelation, the Bible tells us that he was commanded to come up higher. And so this afternoon, brothers and sisters, we are challenged to come up higher. We have exhausted where we are and the brook has dried up and now we are being called commission demanded to go over here demanded to ascend into the glory into the power and into the majesty of God and I want you to understand for some of us, we feel dissatisfied and we feel empty and we are ever searching and we want greater encounters with God. I want to tell you one of the reasons for that in closing, that you were created before you were born. And so your spirit man knows the place or the thing that you are searching for. And some of us are searching and we cannot put what we're searching for into words. We just know that we don't have it yet or have not arrived there yet. It's simply because you were in this place before you were dislodged out of eternity into time when you were dislodged you were released into the womb of your mother. And so, brothers and sisters, your spirit man, whether you are saved or unsaved, begins a journey once you come into flesh to find that place, that original place of your existence, which is in the glory of God, your spirit man, lives and breathes in the glory. And so it is not just only for purpose and destiny, mantis and assignment, but your very spiritual uh, survival demands that you get into the glory of the living God. Hallelujah. So as we close this afternoon, and as we pray, we are praying that God will begin to position us to ascend in the place of glory that he has called us to, that he will begin to position us to move into the dimensions that are assigned to us into the pattern that he has carved out for us from the foundations of the world so that we can ascend into the place of glory we had with him before the foundations of the world. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before your presence one more time. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, we cast out every spirit, Father God, of confusion, every spirit of uncertainty. In the name of Jesus Christ, every design of hell concerning us, 
Father God, let it be overruled and overturned by your power and by your presence in the name of Jesus. We ask for clarity concerning the matters of the kingdom. We ask for clarity concerning the vision that you are placed on the inside of us from the foundations of the world. We ask for clarity concerning our purpose and our destinies. We ask for clarity, mighty God, to find the geographical location that our bones bring footprint, mighty God, and spirit bring lodges. We ask, mighty God, for clarity to walk according to the path that you have laid out for us from the foundations of the world. Let there be light. Let the spirit of wisdom and revelation overtake us in the name of Jesus. Give us accuracy and sharpness in the realm of the spirit. Let all veils be lifted off of our faces. Let all scales be removed from our eyes. Let deafness be removed even now, God, and help us to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Father God, give us eagle-like vision. Help us to perceive where you are calling us to go. In the name of Jesus, we overrun and overturn the ordinances of demonic delay and frustration and the detouring of our destinies, the sabotaging of our destinies in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you will expose every Jezebel in our lives by the light of your coming. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of the living God break the attachment now. In the name of Jesus, every virtue sucked out of our lives, sucked out of our destiny, sucked out of our purpose. Let it be restored a hundredfold now in the mighty name of Jesus. We sever every tire with the spirit of Jezebel in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the covenant be broken. Let the yoke be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we are declaring today that we will ascend into the heights that you have had for us from the foundations of the world, that we will not be satisfied until we find the place, the place of original intent in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God Almighty, we ask mighty God that there will be an instantaneous your ship that the God of the sudden laser will appear over our lives in the mighty name of Jesus that you will rush deliverance to our bosom that there will be a breaking up of time and space that the womb of time will become split that the tangible weight of your glory and your majesty will become a that your voice to travel down, mighty God, into time. And that, Lord God Almighty, you will begin to death, Lord Jesus Christ, every monitoring spirit that your presence will blind familiar spirits in the name of Jesus. And that confusion will be wrought in the kingdom of darkness, that the communication system of the enemy, mighty God, will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let a passage be created in the realm of the spirit for the glory of God to be revealed so that my sons and daughters can enter in so that our families, our bloodlines, our generation can walk in glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, do good. By your good pleasure today, we decree, Father God, upon the authority of your word, upon the authority of the blood of Jesus, upon the authority that you have invested in us, that there will be no more delays in the name of Jesus, that the God that we see will come suddenly to its temple in the name of Jesus. We make the decree. And we enter into the zone of acceleration, the zone of glory 
in your presence. We are there. It's time no more. In the mighty, exalted name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. We give the Lord glory this afternoon. We give the Lord ah, the glory to unto his name. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to his name. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy over, over your times and your seasons. And I declare today that there will be no more delays. The thing that you have been uh, seeking after, the thing that you would have been praying for over years shall suddenly, hallelujah, be released over you. May God open the heavens over your life and cause his glory to fall in the mighty, exalted name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah to